Alright, what's up YouTubers? Welcome back. And in this video, we're doing another influence line example problem using Mueller-Breslau principle. And I've got here a simply supported beam that is pinned at A, roller supported at B, has a free end at C, and point D is just a point along the length of the beam. It is not a hinge. And the span lengths are given to you here. And what we want to do is find influence lines for the internal vertical reaction at B, the internal shear at D, and the internal moment at D. And how we're going to do this is using the Mueller-Breslau principle, which I've summarized over here. The general approach, if you've seen example one, then you're pretty familiar with this approach. But here's the approach I like to take with my influence line problems. And that's drawing that underform structure with the action removed, replacing it with the dis unit displacement or rotation, drawing that deflected shape, which is usually a rigid body motion if you're starting with a statically determinate beam and then calculate values from geometry and then redraw the influence line nice and neat all right now before I get started what I'd like to normally do in my influence line problems is make sure I draw for myself what I would think the external reactions look like just like you would do in a statics problem when you draw the free body diagram and this is important to tell you which direction you want to apply that unit displacement the first problem we're going to take a look at is the influence line for the reaction at B or BY. And the first thing we need to do here is draw the undeformed structure with the action removed. So here's my beam with the BY removed, which really is an unstable structure that can swing around. And I'm going to apply now a unit displacement in the direction of the way I drew BY. So I'm going to apply unit direction, unit displacement that makes or pushes this beam upwards. Notice I didn't do anything in terms of internal to the beam because we're not looking at an internal moment or internal shear. Okay, we're only looking at an external reaction. And so here I'm pushing up the beam a unit of one, which will give me a deflected shape that looks like this. And this distance here is a unit displacement where positive deflections are upwards. So now that we've applied the unit displacement, the next thing that we need to do is calculate values using the geometry of the beam. But this is just a linear deflected shape. So it's a, once you have one, you've got them all by similar triangles. Call this distance y1. We could say that y1 over the entire length of the beam, which was 22.5 meters, and this distance from here to here is merely 15 meters. And so by similar triangles, we could say y1 over 22.5 is equal to 1 over 15. And notice that the units of meter would have canceled out. So y1 is 22.5 over 15, which is 1.5. So this, now we can go ahead and draw or redraw the influence line to make it all nice and neat. Here's the position in meters. The y-axis or the vertical axis is the influence line factor, which is really just a multiplier for the concentrated force that's moving across your beam to give you this vertical reaction at B. And if you calculated one more point, you know, right at 7.5, this value would be 0.5. So this is the influence line for the reaction at B with a concentrated unit load moving across 